everybody, it is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Power. This is season six, episode three, Forgot About Dre. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you would know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode was given everything tonight. Man, I actually watched it last night, but hold on, y'all, let me tell you. You know how you 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 take one of them midday naps and then you kind of wake up because you're feeling good, but you wake up like, oh, shit, what time is it? Where am I? That's how I feel right now. I feel real frazzled. I'm still real hot because, you know, like I said, you wake up out of a nap and you was feeling good when you was taking that nap and then you wake up, you're like, what the hell day is it? Lord, am I late for work? You just feel like you went into a whole nother dimension of sleep. And you got to catch up with the rest of the world. That's what it feel like right now. I feel so goddamn miscombobulated. I don't know what the hell is going on. I woke up rushing. And child, that was the best two-hour nap. I have no about four, five-hour nap I've ever had in my life. Thank you, God, for that nap. Because I needed it. So hopefully I ain't going to make this review too long. Because I was supposed to get this review out to y'all a long time ago. But like I said, that nap gave me, any, <laughs> gave me damn near a heart attack. I woke up feeling good and scared and panicked out at the same damn time. I didn't know what was going on. Lord, it's still hot. Hopefully y'all are ready for this review. And ain't got no wine. My heart pumping fast as it is. So I got some water. Hopefully y'all got your wine ready because this episode was given. I'm going to try not to make this review too long, okay? I'm already talking too much. Hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So grab your drinks, baby, and let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. So Donovan is at the safe house with the team. He got about seven to eight of his little SWAT dudes with him. They're getting ready to transfer Dre to the courthouse so he can testify on Alicia Jimenez, right? Now, he's telling the team, like, look here. I'm going to need y'all to on the first perimeter. I'm going to need y'all to secure it. I'm going to need y'all through on the back perimeter. I'm going to need y'all to secure it. I'm going to need team A2, team B3, make sure it's a complete 360 of the area we need to secure before we get Dre on up out of here. He pressed his cargo, and we need to make sure we get him to the damn courthouse, right? Meanwhile, Dre is in the back with his little girl. His little girl is crying. She ain't nothing but a baby. She don't know what the hell going on. She see all these dudes surrounding big old scary freaky looking dudes with guns and stuff she cries she don't know what the hell going on so dre trying to hold her and console her right donovan goes to the back and donovan like hey man you need to get ready we finna saddle up and ride we take to the courthouse he's like look man i can't concentrate she been up all night she crying she's scared she don't know what's going on donovan like look the way you holding her you ain't even holding her right come here mama oh he said a weird when he said that so he grabbed the baby so he holding dre baby automatically she stops crying so he telling her like I know he's telling Dre, like, look here, I don't need you to just get your mind together, get ready, because we on our way to this courthouse, and um, you finna be on deck, you know what I'm saying? Just then, they getting ready to walk to the front and leave, Donovan is holding baby girl, I think her name is Heaven, and he sees a shadow in the door, he kind of get quiet, everybody looking like, my nigga, you see that? You see that shadow on the door? Donovan get on the radio. Uh, 87 to 11, what is your perimeter? I say, I said 87 to 11, what's your perimeter? Baby, next thing you know, dude came in like a thief in the night. Blue, 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 blasting through the door. Dude came in with guns just to blazing everywhere. Lord, it was bullets and shit flying everywhere. This way, that way, that way, every way. Everybody got bullets. Everybody shooting at everybody. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It's a whole goddamn shootout at the OK Corral in there. It's going down. Then, Dre is trying to signal to Donovan to give him his baby. But Donovan, like, nigga, we caught the crossfire. I can't give you the baby. Now you have to hold up. Wait back. Donovan got one gun shooting, holding the baby. He out there on some Wild Wild West type shit. Then, it gets silent. It's a Mexican dude come through there creeping. He looking, trying to make sure ain't nobody. Oh, you look like you. Pew, you like you still alive. Oh, you, pew, you ain't dead enough. Now you're dead for sure, motherfucker. He's just going around silencing everybody. Donovan creates a diversion. He throws something so the dude hear the sound. He go that way. He go that way. Donovan, boo, 
Ooh, shoots him that way. Now, Dre, he finally reaches out to Donovan. Donovan gives him the baby. Now, he's trying to tell Donovan, give me a gun, man. I know how to shoot, man. I get us on up out of here. Donovan, like, look, motherfucker, you the reason why we in here in the first place and we having to shoot out for our damn life because of your ass. No, you're not finna get no doggone gun. Finally, somehow or another, after Donovan shot the last dude, uh, Dre getting ready to run. Donovan tells him it's probably some more coming. You ain't having him get in the bathroom, lay low, get in the tub. It's some more backup on the way. Dre like, oh no, hell no, man. Dre sneaks off and gets a gun. Donovan sees him when he gets that gun. Donovan like, oh no, Dre, man. I'm just like you, man. You don't want to do this. Drago walks up on the side of him, holding his baby girl in one hand and a gun in the other hand. Like, see, you know what the problem with uh bitch ass niggas like you? I don't even remember the rest of what he said. Next thing you know, he raises the gun at the same time. His baby girl turns and looks. He shoots Donovan twice in the head. This nigga shot Donovan and killed Donovan with his baby girl in his hands. The baby girl turns and looks. Blood spatters on her face. She just wipe it off like it ain't nothing. They ride out into the sunset. Like she done seen this type of ghetto shit before, so she wasn't even phased by her daddy killing somebody. I was like, oh damn, in front of the baby. Later on, we see Dre in the airport with his baby girl. He trying to have on a disguise. This fool thought he was finna flee the country. Now that everybody want to kill him, lo and behold, SWAT team come swoop this fool up in the airport. He trying to escape. At the same time, the new DA dude done meet with Sax, letting Sax know, hey, Donovan is dead. What's all this mess going on with Angela Valdez and her name being all over Dre paperwork as the witness? Why was she trying to get him to tell on Alicia for this and then Alicia will walk with this, but he was trying to lie. Like, what the hell going on, man? Sex life, man, I don't I don't know, but uh I'm gonna talk to Dre because uh, I need to let Dre know. Like, look here, he's safe, he can still testify. But the DA do worry, like this fool already done tried to flee the country. What make you think he finna testify now? All I know is if he don't testify, you damn sure gonna lose your job because you already know he's skating on thin ice as it is. He didn't want to hire Sax as it was because he knew Sax was shady. But he need a scapegoat should nothing go down right with this whole investigation. So he letting Sax know, I'm gonna need you to go get your boy Dre, okay? Make sure he ready to testify. I don't care if he's scared or not. Let his ass know he up on deck. Next, we see Senator Tate. <laughs> Lorenz Tate with his little foreign ass. He in there goosing getting it in with some random chick or whatever, right? She, we see that she got a big old wedding ring on. He in that goosey, he in the front back doing now and this. I'm like, ooh, go on, get, go, go on, get with it then, Tate. <laughs> so somebody from the DNC calls. He don't stop mid-stroke or nothing. He pick up the phone and he steady pick, you know, just talking like, hey, what's going on? This is Senator Tate. How can I help you? What can I help you with today? <laughs> He was getting it in. He ain't stop for nothing. So the DNC basically was saying that they're going to send him some help to help with his campaign because they want him to win and be the next governor. Whoop the whoop, yada, 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 right? Cut to the next scene. We see the woman that he getting it in with is actually the wife. So I guess it's his assistant, that white dude. I left that out on the last review. Long story short, it's this white dude. I guess he's his, like this little errand boy that works for him or whatever. It's his wife. Well, last episode, Lorenz ended up popping him. I keep calling him Lorenz Tate. He ended up popping him in the stomach for something or another. If you don't already watch it, you already know what I'm talking about. Well, it's his wife that Senator Tate in there getting it in with. I was like, oh, really? Wow. Next thing you know, we have walks in strong black female power. Her name is Ramona Garrity. She's like this high profile campaign manager. Her husband is Senator Powell. Now he's apparently caught up in some kind of sex scandal involving a bunch of prostitutes, whoop the whoop, yada, yada, yada. She's supposed to come there to help Senator um, Tate with his uh, account submit Tate to help him like redo his image. Basically she was sent there by the DNC to help rebuild his image so that he can win and he can be the governor or whatever, right? But it's something in her, I like her, cause she came in calling off people's name. Yes, 
Herman Johnson, do the do, lock the lob, ready, uh, do the do, um, James Jones, Jesse Jones, Jesse Black, but. Uh, if you are, if you somebody's name that I called out, your services are no longer needed. The DNC thanks you very much. Everybody just like, damn, you just finna come in here and just be firing people like that? She was like, yes, I'm here to clean this up. Obviously, you need some help, so this is what I'm here to do. I'm here to help. Then she asked about James. Now, you know, that's the last thing that Tate wanted. Councilman Tate only want money from Ghost. He don't want nothing else to do with him. But, oh, no, she was brought in there to do a job, and that's the first thing she asked. First things first, I done got rid of everybody else that we didn't need. Now, who the hell is James St. Patrick? He looking like, huh? Y'all, Tommy done bought Keisha ass to the trap house or the trap building, the trap warehouse, whatever it is. She stepped out the car in some cold ass black Louis Vuitton boots. I ain't gonna lie, I was like, damn, Keisha. He's showing her the different ropes. You know, she trying to be a hustler's wife now. You know what I'm saying? So he teaching her what this is, how we make this, how we flip this, how you do this, whoop the whoop. Now, y'all already know, Keisha not built for this. I'm just waiting, y'all. I'm sorry to ruin it. I'm sorry to say this, but y'all, Keisha not going to make it through the full season. She just not. She not built for this, and then she want it too bad. Most people that get into the business like that, it's like she just want it too bad to where she not willing to like really sit down and learn something. She's like, no, you don't need this person to do this. I can do all of this. Now, mind you, she trying to get into it because she don't want him to deal with uh, Tasha no more. So, it's just something with Keisha. I don't trust Keisha. I'm just saying. But he bring her on over there to the warehouse. Because he finna teach her, basically, how to be a hustler's wife. Child, Keisha not built for this. Keisha built to stay her ass in the salon some damn where. This ain't her cup of tea. Y'all, later we see Sax ends up meet, meeting with Alicia Jimenez and her lawyer. He's letting her know, like, basically, we know that she was behind this whole ambush. We know that you're trying to kill our only witness, Dre. You probably already done got to dog on Angela Valdez's ass. We know. So what's going on? Tell us what's popping. She's saying that she ain't behind nothing, but they trying to get her extradited or expedited whatever back to Mexico where she can stay in trial there. Basically, I'm thinking they want her to go back to Mexico because they know that they got their bread is long there and that they can get her off there. They're like, uh, um, Sax is telling her, now, hell no, we arrested her here. She gonna do her dog on court date here. But he mean as his lawyer is letting her know, look here, the only witness you got is somebody who sell dope anyway. So regardless, she gonna end up getting off. That's another reason why they really trying to keep Dre in the loop and get his ass to testify. Cause they know if he don't testify, Alicia gonna walk. And they, they damn sure don't want that, right? So later on, Tommy and Tasha, they catching up. You already know how they like to do. They like to go sit in Tommy's car, smoke a blunt, and they catching up or whatever, right? Now, Tommy is saying how, you know, he's steady trying to build Keisha up for this, but he know Keisha ain't built for this. Keisha, I mean, Tasha steady saying how she needs more money from Ghost, but Ghost is being greedy because, of course, you know he don't want to change nothing on the divorce decree. They done signed a prenup, and he figured if he can just give her money here and there, that's good enough. She needs a way to basically get more money coming in. He needs a way to basically wash the money that he has. Plus, he needs some more money because you already know he's still in it with Serbian dude, Jason. This Serbian dude, Jason, he ain't no good to be trusted. And just as they sitting there talking and chilling, Serbian dude end up texting him, telling him, I need to meet with you ASAP. I'm, I was even like, oh, hell, here we go. So Tommy gets over there to the Serbian dude. Serbian dude like, look here, I need you to deliver me Alicia Jimenez. He like, how the hell am I supposed to do that? I ain't got no female hitters in the Fed, and she in Fed custody, so what the hell do you expect me to do? He like, I don't know, I don't care what you do, but I want you to bring her to me alive. At the same time, he's telling Tommy this. You see the camera kind of zoom in and pan out. He's telling Ghost the same damn thing. Telling Ghost, I need you to bring her to me alive. Ghost is like, hey, man, look, you know I'm out the drug business. The only reason why I'm paying you when I'm paying you is because I'm trying to keep you to keep Tommy off my ass. That's the only reason. I don't have nothing to do with this. Serbian dude basically like, I'm not asking you do you want to do it. You owe your debt to me. So if you don't want to have to pay me off no more money, I'm going to need you to deliver Alicia Jimenez to me alive. So he's telling Tommy and Ghost this at the same time. Now, we already know he's trying to put Ghost and Tommy against each other. But 
his thing is if Alicia goes to, to jail or she ends up dead, then basically the streets will be up for grabs when it comes to who can be controlling the streets. Serbian dude don't want that. He wants full control over everything. And plus, he wants to run Tommy and Ghost, which is what he's doing. So, y'all, it was it was a whole big old fiasco right there. I was low. Lord, it was, oh, I need some water. Y'all, so back at the school, we already know Tariq, the man, he out there selling pills and shit. Evie and Braylon, Evie is a little girl, little cute little black girl magic that's on there, and Braylon is his roommate. They all sitting in there talking, whoop the whoop, shoot the shit. They all saying how they need some more money, because they done sold out of pill. it, pills. It's midterms, all these rich white kids in there, they going crazy over the Adderall, so they need some more. So he telling that he got to go back to the city and re-up. Evie was like, um, so who was you, who you re up from, who you copping from? He like, hold on, hold on, chill. She's cute, but it's something in my spirit say don't trust her. She's super cute, but I don't trust her. So like the regular old dope man he is, he got to go to the city and re-up. Y'all, I still can't get over the fact that Tyree called himself somebody drug dealer trying to sell something out here. Boy, the parallel between him and Ghost is just too much. Y'all, so Tasha finally gets to the house. She gets to her mama house to pick up gas because her mama was babysitting, right? Soon as she get there, she running in late. She like, mama, I apologize. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The traffic was just crazy. Mama's like, you can't come late and smell like weed, girl, stop. Mama's just hating. Mama, stop hating. Girl, stop hating. So when she go in, she sees a whole bunch of other kids in there. So Tasha like, mama, where these kids coming from? Who, who the hell the kids is these? Mama say, um, a couple of other mothers in the neighborhood pay me to watch their kids too. They figure since I'm already watching Yaz, they ask me to watch their kids too. So she sees one of the mothers that's coming and picking up her babies, paying out cash money to mama. Of course, that get Tasha Wills to turn and she like, oh, so I need my own business. Mama up here watching these badass kids. Let me see if I can make some shake with this. We already know Tasha stay playing or something. So y'all back at Tasha's new spot, Tyreek is there and Yaz is there. They're all sitting down and they having dinner. Now Tyreek is asking Tasha, all right, you know, mom, so uh, where's my room at? He's telling her, well, she's telling him, well, you can sleep in Yaz's room because she's going to be with her dad for the weekend. He complaining that the bed is too little. She's like, well, you can sleep on the couch. He's like, man, I ain't going to sleep on the couch. She's like, look here. I'm trying to do the best that I can. Don't be coming up in here with your little ungrateful black ass complaining about what I can and what I can't do. I'm doing the best that I can do. Just then, Ghost comes and knocks on the door, says he can't watch Yaz for the weekend. Now, I was right there with Tasha. You came all the way over here to tell me that you not finna watch her? That don't make no sense. Just then, he sees Tyreek sitting at the table. He like, how come you didn't tell me your son was here for the weekend? She was like, hell, I didn't even know he was coming down. What the hell you want anyway? What you coming up here and talking crap for? Then he gets to talking about basically her apartment, like, how much you paying for this spot? She like, look here, since both of you and your son got a problem with my living arrangements, how about you take your damn son, y'all go back to your nice, beautiful penthouse, and I can sit here with my daughter and I can chill. I ain't got to worry about now. What are y'all goddamn mess? I was right there with her, like, um, excuse me? You ain't got to like this. So the next day, um, Tyreek ends up going back with ghosts or whatever. It's the next morning. They both kind of sitting at the little, you know, in the kitchen, whatever, having breakfast. And so Ghost tells um, Tyreek, he's like, hey, look, I just want to let you know your Uncle Tommy's not dead. I thought he was, was dead. Now, Tyreek, and even I was like, boy, that was bad acting. He was like, oh, you mean so he's not dead? Ghost immediately could tell. He was like, nigga, how long you been knowing that this fool was alive? Look here, I done told you. Tommy ain't to be trusted. And if you still rocking with him, then I can't trust you. Tyreek is like, no, dad, it's cool. You can trust me. He goes and gives him this little awkward ass hug or whatever that he does. Even and he when he gives him this hug, he kind of smiles like, yeah, old bitch, nigga. Even Ghost was kind of looking like, nigga, what kind of hug was that? You know what I'm saying? So Ghost ends up leaving because he said he got a whole bunch of stuff he got to do with the whole campaign with Tate, whoop de whoop So Tyree tells him, you know, I'm just going to finish up breakfast and I'm going to leave anyway. It's cool. I got it. Ghost ends up leaving. He goes in his sister Raina's room. This fool had a whole stash of pills hidden in Raina's closet. But I guess it's not as much as he thought it was going to be because when he grabs it, he kind of looks at it like, damn, this all I got? Like, damn. But then you got that hidden in your baby sister who's dead room for real. 
tell Tyree, he a thug for real, for real. I'm like, oh, Lord. Now, Detective Sachs and Blanca meet up. They talking about the whole Donovan case. Now, you know, regardless of what, they trying to pin everything on ghosts. Regardless of what anything sounds like, they putting all these different pieces together. And even the pieces that they're putting together even kind of points back to saying that Ghost isn't the one that did it, that it could have been somebody else, or it could have been somebody behind, you know, with the he mean ass cartel. But regardless of what, they trying to make all the pieces fit back together so that it falls back on Ghost. Meanwhile, Ghost goes and shows up at Proctor's He's telling Proctor, I need you to give me the exact location of where um, Alicia Jimenez is because I got this and whoop de whoop. Of course, Proctor's scary ass. Like, I don't want nothing to do with that. Hell no, man. I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm not going to be responsible for nothing. Ghost is basically like, you pretty much already responsible now because I done told you. So what's up? Where's she at? At this same time, Tasha trying to get her mama to go into business. She's trying to ask her little questions like, so mama, when you're watching these kids, say one of them like sprain their ankle or they bump their head, like what do they do? What's the insurance? What's the liability? Mama like, I just take them to the hospital. I ain't got time for all this extra shit. She like, well look here, if you had a business with your own licenses and all of that, you'd be covered, mama. Ain't that fun? Mama like, hell no, I'm retired. No, not seem fun about taking care of kids full-time, 24-7. Uh -uh, I only do this for fun. Uh -uh, get a little pocket change or whatever. Go play bingo or something. Uh-uh, I don't want to do this for full-time for, for real life. No. We get back to school. He give Evie and Braylon with a little bit of pills he got. They both looking like, damn, my nigga, this it? This all you got? He telling them, look here, this is all I can get from my supplier. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to find me a new connect. Now, mind you, his only connect was Kanan. Kanan gave him that so he could start up his little business. Now, with Kanan being gone, he damn sure can't go to Uncle Tommy and ask Uncle Tommy to give him a bunch of pills. So, I'm interested to see what he finna do now to come up with your... What she finna do now, player? Proctor at the house chilling, helping his baby girl with homework. Next thing you know, Tommy come beating out the damn door. Now, baby girl backpack was sitting there with the little unicorn on it that got the little recording device on it, right? Now, first, Tommy... And, and Proctor getting ready to talk because Proctor, uh, Proctor tells his daughter, you know, go ahead and go upstairs, baby. I'm going to come and I'm going to help with your homework in a minute. Now, she kind of looking at Tommy like, Daddy, who who is this man? He looking scary as hell. They get ready to talk, but baby girl is like, hold on, let me grab my backpack. So she grabbed her backpack and took her backpack before they actually got to talking about anything good, which I was glad because I was like, oh, Lord, he finna prosecute his damn self, Lord. Tommy comes him with the same thing Ghost came at him with. I need you to let me know where Lisa Jimenez is going to be, where her drop-off is when she go to court, whoop de whoop I need to get her. They both basically punk and Proctor. Like, you need to let me know where she going to be at or I'm going to beat your ass. Later on at Truth, Ramona Garrity comes in or whatever, right? No, she was already there. She was waiting on Ghost to get there. Now, we can already see there's a little sexual tension between Ramona and Ghost both, right? Because they both looking at each other real seductively and shit. He making her a drink. He talking about, you know, they're talking about each other's scandal. I'm still trying to figure Ramona out. Whose side is she on? Whose side is she on, really? I don't know if she's really feeling Ghost and they gonna end up doing some grown folk stuff together or if she really somebody who working for the DNC undercover or working for Jimenez undercover, somehow I don't trust her just yet, but she trying to get to know Ghost. I'm watching you, bitch. I got my eyes on you. So Tyreek back at school, he in his room chilling with his roommate Braylon and these other two little Bible heads that's in there, whatever, right? Just then, Evie walks in and she like, oh, my bad, I'll come back later. I didn't know you had company. Tyreek was like, no, nah, Evie, cool, hold on. Hey, y'all finna have to get the hell on up out of here. Ready like, hey man, me too. It's my room too. Like, I don't give a damn. You have to get the hell on up out of here too. Bounce. Deal. He make them all get up and leave, right? Him and Abby sit down and they start playing chess. I feel like he just did that to show out or whatever, right? So 
Evie's like, look here, what's up with you? You seem like you stressed, like tell me what's going on. He tells Evie that his only connect that he has died. And so now basically he has so well, he don't know what he gonna do to get some more pills. He says that, um, you know, he's just been stressed out lately. Evie was like, I know. She actually looked him up online, seeing that he had a twin sister that died. And so he's like, yeah, I've just been feeling like all alone and lonely since my sister died. Here come Evie. Well, you don't have to feel alone. I'm here for you. Watch that little heifer. Watch her. Because there's something in my spirit about her too. I don't know if it's just because it's last season that can't nobody be trusted. But watch her. Because she said something about when her brother died. I don't know if she said her brother died or when her brother got killed. That her mama ain't been right ever since. Who was your brother? Hmm? Was your brother Ray Ray? Huh? Yeah. Watch her. I don't trust her ass, watch her. So Councilman Tate is meeting with his campaign team, right? Of course, Ramona Garrity is there. He's up, he's giving a speech, lo and behold, Ghost walks in. And Ramona's like, ah, Mr. St. Patrick, thank you so much for coming. She invited him to come to be a part of the meeting. Cause when he walked in, Tate looking like, nigga, what is you doing here? I ain't sent you no text message, no ping, let you know that I was here. Ramona basically wants, when um, Councilman Tate is on the road, you know, kissing babies and shaking hands, he wants Ghost and his wife, Tasha, to represent him here, you know, in New York or whatever. Put on this, this front like he's always been doing. Now, Ghost don't want to. Ghost lets her know, you know, look here, um, that's really not going to be an easy thing to do because me and my wife are going through a divorce right now. He said that on purpose because after he said that, Ramona was like, oh, really? A whole divorce. I didn't know that. <laughs> that's what I, I, I can tell. That's what she was doing, girl. That's what she was doing. So she kind of perked up after that or whatever, right? Now, Tate really wasn't here for it. Because, again, he wants the money from Ghost. But he don't really want nothing else to do with Ghost, right? So after that... Councilman Tate and Ramona go and meet with Tasha to basically try to buy Tasha off. Tasha's whole thing is, look here, don't come at me sideways. What is it that y'all want from me and what the hell is it that I'm going to get up out of this? Basically, Ramona's same thing. Like, look here, we need you and your husband to put on this front that y'all this united, happy family so y'all can represent Councilman Tate whenever he's on the road. Tasha, like, under one condition, I'm going to need y'all to expedite me some permits and some licensure and all the shit that I need so I can open up my own business for a daycare. Now, Councilman Tate was getting ready to BS, so he was getting ready to be like, well, I see what I can do, baby. Ramona was like, done. We ought it all figured out. What else you need? She was like, nope, that's it. That's all I need. He was like, okay. We'll see you around. She like, uh-huh, yeah, I like her. Because, see, Councilman Tate didn't want to do that. He was going to BS his way through. Uh-uh. Ramona was like, bitch, I got you. Don't worry about it. Which, again, why I say, watch her. Watch her. All right, y'all. So, this next scene is where it went down. Okay. So, we at the courthouse. It's the morning that Dre is supposed to be testifying against Alicia Jimenez. Now, we got Ghost that's disguised as a maintenance man working on the elevator. We got Keisha, who's disguised as just a regular business casual woman. She's going into the courthouse. Now, before they actually get there, we see Tommy and his crew mapping out the area how they're going to get Alicia Jimenez. Now, they need some a female person that's going to be there in the bathroom so that they can give them the word whenever Alicia is by herself. Whenever Alicia is by herself, that's where Keisha comes in, right? So the security guards are bringing in Alicia Jimenez. They take her in the bathroom. She changes to her business casual clothes. Then she goes back into the courthouse. She's sitting down at the table. The prosecutors end up bringing in Dre too fast by accident. He actually ends up making eye contact with Alicia Jimenez and she kind of looking at him like, hey, bitch, I'm going to kill you. He looking like, uh, no, bitch, no, you're not. So they get him on up out of there. Next thing you know, she's sitting at the table, she's drinking a glass of water. We see another security guard, a secret service agent do whatever. He gets a text message, looks at his phone, it's $10,000 that's been cash at to him. I was like, what? Next thing you know, Alicia starts coughing, coughing really, really hard. She damn near passes out. They carry her out of the courtroom into the bathroom before they put her in the bathroom. It's another security guard that goes in the bathroom, makes sure that it's completely empty. There's one stall that says out of order, has tape on it. He doesn't even look in that damn stall. He just looks at the bottom, sees no feet are there, clears out the rest of the bathroom, sees nobody else is in there. Now, they let Alicia go into the bathroom where she's in there sick or whatever, right? Lo and behold, Keisha is hiding in that stall that said out of order. 
she texts Tommy, Alicia's in the bathroom, right? At the same time, she's walking out of the bathroom. She just so, well, Ghost just so happens to see her coming out of the bathroom. He's like, what the fuck is Keisha doing here? Now, mind you, he's dressed as the maintenance guy. His thing was he was going to kidnap Alicia to take him, to take her back to the Serbian dude. But it was just him working by himself. So, like I said, he sees Keisha coming out of the bathroom. So he's like, well, what the hell is Keisha doing here? Next thing you know, EMS goes into the bathroom to get Alicia. They put her on the stretcher. It's two of the hood dudes that work for Tommy. At this time, Ghost is like, oh, hell no, it's too much going on. I got to get the hell on up out of here. Ghost goes in the parking lot. He's pulling out to leave like the maintenance guy. He just so happens to come around the corner, sees Tommy driving the ambulance. Him and Tommy make eye contact, both like, nigga, what you doing here? What you doing here? Just then, his hood dudes were the other EMS guys. They pull Alicia in the back of the EMS ambulance. They drive off. The police is getting ready to follow behind the ambulance. Another one of the hood dudes is dressed like a Bell's bombman. Bell's bondsman, he comes and pulls the truck out, blocks the police so the ambulance gets away clean. So Tommy and his crew were the ones that actually grabbed Alicia Jimenez. They end up taking Alicia Jimenez back to the Serbian dude, Jason. She all dazed and confused. When she wake up, she see, oh, damn, I'm here with him. So he like, you gonna tell me everything? You gonna give me names, locations, whoop de whoop everything I'm asking for? She like, well, can I smoke a cigarette first? He like, cool, bitch, you gonna die anyway. He give her a cigarette. She like, to hell with you, kiss my ass. I ain't telling you nothing. No sooner than he said that, pow! This fool pop a hot one in her chest and her chin kills her. Tommy like, nigga, what you had me bring go through what? Like, what you had me go through all of that for when you was finna kill a bitch anyway? He was like, you know how it is when you got a vendetta? I want to kill her myself. He was like, man, you had me and my homeboy going against each other. Why you call Ghost to tell Ghost to do the same thing? Serbian dude Jason gonna say, well, you know how it is when you're a gambling man? I was taking a bet. Seeing which one of y'all was gonna bring it back first. And quite frankly, I didn't think he was gonna be able to do it. So Tommy looking dumb like, oh, really? Y'all, oh, you just played me like that? Ghost goes and sees Proctor. He like, man, what the hell is up? Why did you tell Tommy where Alicia was gonna be? I know didn't nobody tell her but you because you wasn't nobody but told me. He was like, look here, I didn't have no choice. He put me in a situation where I had to tell him. Then, Ghost, now he's panicking because now Serbian dude Jason is hitting his ass up telling him, no, Alicia, I need my dog on money. So, of course, Ghost needs some money. He calls the old white dude from like two, three seasons ago, the one who wanted to buy out his club, the one who wanted like a percentage of the club. Yeah, him. He ends up calling him because he know dude going to give him some money, but he know dude is shady with it. So basically, he tells him, yeah, I'll give you some money with 3% interest, and I want a higher stake in Truth Nightclub. So now, not only do you owe this Serbian dude money, now you got this other old rich dude on your ass about your club. Like, Ghost, you ain't safe out here. You ain't got no friends out here whatsoever, right? Tommy goes and meets with Keisha. She's all excited because they done got away with it. They got Alicia whoop de woo He's telling Keisha, like, look here, I need to clean this money. I need Tasha to come back on because I need Tasha to clean this money through your shop. Keisha, like, hell no, I told you. We not messing with her no more. I know how to do it myself. I can do it. Don't worry about it. Now, Keisha, you trying to do too much, trying to be a, a hustler's wife, you going to get your ass caught up. I'm just saying. Y'all, so it ends. Ghost ends up calling Tommy. Now he like, look here, you already see how Jason tried to do us. He tried to pin us against each other. I'm trying to say, we need to bury the hatchet, whatever it is that we was going through, screw that. We gonna say the hell with that and we gonna both take him out ourselves. Like, come on now, man. We better together. Tommy like, I know, hell no. The only reason why you come to me is because you ain't got nobody, but I'm finna let you know straight up. When I see you, nigga, it's on sight. I'm canceling Christmas on your ass. And he hangs up. Y'all, 
that was the end of the episode. This review was so much longer than I thought it was going to be, and I apologize for it, but y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed it. If there was any parts that I left out, please let me know. This episode was given, baby. It was given, it was given, and I hope y'all enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.